In 17th century Tuscany, Italy, Benedetta is a young girl sent to a Catholic convent, where she spends her days piously and quietly. But when an unlikely romance begins with a new recruit, Patakia, Benedetta claims she's having visions of Jesus, who wants to make her his wife. Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to review the 2021 French movie Benedetta. Please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon, so you never miss my future videos. In the 17th century Italy, young Benedetta Carlini is being taken to the convent in the town of Pescia to become a nun. When they stop at a roadside altar to pray, a group of bandits arrives and attempt to steal Benedetta's mother's necklace. The devout Benedetta warns them that she speaks with a Virgin Mary, who will punish them. When a bird, which Benedetta had identified as being the spirit of Mary, defecates in the bandit leader's eye. His whole pack of friends laughed at him, and he has to give back the necklace. In Pesha, Benedetta is taken into the convent, run by Abbess Felicita. Years later, Benedetta is a grown woman and a devout nun. During a play, in which Benedetta is playing the Virgin Mary, she has a vision of Jesus calling to her. A young woman named Bartolome seeks shelter in the convent from her abusive father. Benedetta is assigned to oversee the integration of the poor and uneducated Bartolome into the life of the convent. Bartolome tells Benedetta that she was sexually abused by her father and brothers. That night, Bartolome kisses Benedetta. Benedetta warns Bartolome to be wary of the abbess and her daughter, Sister Christina. Benedetta begins to have visions of Jesus calling her to join him and save her from dangers. After a particularly fraught vision, where a man who she mistakes for Jesus saves her from being gang raped, Benedetta falls into a deep illness. Abbess Felicita assigns Bartolome to look after her. Benedetta begins to recover and starts teaching the illiterate Bartolome to read and write. Benedetta has a vision of Christ on the cross. He tells her to undress herself and him and then touch his hands. The next morning, Benedetta wakes up with stigmata on her hands and feet. An investigation ensues. Abbess Felicita is skeptical because previous incidents of stigmata have always occurred during prayer while Benedetta was asleep. Benedetta also lacks the head wounds formed by the crown of thorns. After leaving Felicita's chambers, Benedetta collapses. As people rush to check on her, she begins speaking in a male voice, castigating those who do not believe in her. She now has bleeding wounds on her forehead. Sister Christina notices a shard of glass on the floor and tells her mother that she believes that Benedetta inflicted the wounds herself. Felicita warns her that the male power structure has decided to verify Benedetta's stigmata as a legitimate miracle for political purposes. Benedetta is elevated to abbess in place of Felicita. Christina speaks out against this but is warned by her mother that going against this decision could destroy her. Benedetta and Bartolome are moved into Felicita's old quarters. They too begin having sex. Bartolome carves a sex toy for Benedetta in the shape of the Virgin Mary. Christina goes to the priest and shares her belief that Benedetta faked her stigmata. She lies and says that she saw Benedetta inflict her head injuries. At mealtime the next day, the priest makes Christina say her accusations publicly. When called on to back up her daughter's claim, Felicita refuses to lie and says that Christina did not directly witness what happened. Benedetta apparently possessed with the spirit of Jesus, orders Christina to flagellate herself. Felicita observes Benedetta and Bartolome having sex through a peephole in their chambers. A comet passes over the abbey, which many interpret as a sign of impending tragedy. As it passes, Christina flings herself from the abbey roof. As she dies, Benedetta asks to intercede with God on behalf of her soul, but an angry Felicita tells her to stay away. As a plague begins to ravage the countryside, 
Benedetta has a vision that Pesce will be spared and orders the abbey closed to prevent infection. Felicita slips out and travels to meet with the local nuncio, sharing what she knows about Benedetta's sexual indiscretions. Felicita returns to the abbey with the nuncio as the plague worsens. Entering the abbey, they discover that Benedetta has died of unknown causes. As the nuncio attempts to administer the last rites, Benedetta awakens, saying that she was in heaven and has seen the fates of all those present. The nuncio has his men search the abbey for the wooden sex toy but they cannot find it. He opens a court of inquiry into Benedetta's conduct. When questioned, Bartolome denies having sex, saying that she loves Benedetta as she does her other sisters. The nuncio talks with Benedetta in private. As she washes his feet, she notices a flea and realizes that he has likely brought the plague into the abbey. Bartolome is tortured by the nuncio's men and finally confesses to her sexual activities, when she leads the nuncio to the wooden dildo, hidden inside a book in Benedetta's chambers, he has Benedetta arrested. Benedetta once more begins speaking in a man's voice and lashes out at those who persecute her, announcing that the nuncio will soon fall ill. The nuncio discovers that Felicita has the plague and orders her condition hidden. But Ptolemy is expelled from the abbey. The day has arrived for Benedetta to be executed. She first asks to speak to Felicita to beg forgiveness. She tells Felicita that Christina is in heaven. A distraught Felicita asks Benedetta what she has seen of her future. Benedetta whispers something to her. The nuncio is warned that the people of Pesce will not allow Benedetta to be executed, but he proceeds anyway. As Benedetta is led through the crowd, Bartolome pushes her way to the front and begs forgiveness. Benedetta merely smiles at her. In the town square, the nuncio tells Benedetta that he will allow her to be strangled rather than burned at the stake if she confesses. Benedetta agrees. Benedetta reveals new stigmata on her hands and begins speaking in a male voice, telling the crowd that the angel of death approaches. Felicita emerges from the crowd and doffs her robe, revealing plague sores. The nuncio's men begin burning Benedetta at the stake, but the crowd attacks them, forcing them to flee. Bartolome unties Benedetta but discovers a bloody piece of glass at her feet. The nuncio flees for safety, but is attacked and killed by a mob. Benedetta arrives and offers to pray for him. The nuncio asks her if she saw whether he will go to heaven or hell. When she tells him he will go to heaven he accuses her of lying. But Ptolemy hustles Benedetta away. Felicita steps on the pyre meant for Benedetta and is burned to death. In an abandoned stable outside of town, Benedetta and Bartolome awake, having spent the night together. Seeing Pesha in the distance, Benedetta begins dressing saying that she has to return. But Ptolemy begs her to stay, saying that they can finally be together and that they can go anywhere. She tries to get Benedetta to admit, just between them, that she faked her stigmata, but Benedetta refuses. Insisting that the people need her, Benedetta heads off towards Pesha. A title card reveals that Benedetta lived in the abbey until her death at the age of 70 and that the plague spared Pesha. The film explores female desire in a world that denies it, helped by humane and considered performances from Virginie Fira. As the title character and newcomer Daphne Patakia as her lover. With the always dependable Charlotte Rampling eyeing them suspiciously as the skeptical, scowling abbess. But the director is too interesting and too irreverent a filmmaker to simply go down one well-trodden path. He seems fascinated by how this story intersects with sexual expression and freedom, power dynamics and gender, and the clashing of reason and faith. Thanks for watching.